little skeletons, it is Disney Queen Skelly here, and I just actually wanted to tell you guys about a little bit of a challenge that Hubby and I went through in October. So we decided to do this challenge called the 30 Day Halloween Movie Challenge. Now, unfortunately, we didn't do all the movies like we intended. We actually made a list um, before October started. And here, here was the list that we intended to do. So October 1st was going to be Creep. October 2nd, A Nightmare on Elm Street. October 3rd, The Exorcist. October 4th, Ma. F October 5th, Hush. October 6th, A Quiet Place. 7th, Insidious. 8th, Paranormal Activity. 9th, Sleepy Hollow. 10th, Pan's Labyrinth. 11th, Ma. Mama, not Ma, Mama. <laughs> 12th, Get Out. 13th, Cloverfield. 14th, Us. 15th, 10 Cloverfield Lane. 16th, The Gift. 17th, Crimson Peak. 18th, VHS. 19th, Crawl. 20th, 47 meters down uncaged, 21st, Terrifier, 22nd, Friday the 13th, 23rd, Trick or Treat, 24th, Child's Play 2019, 25th, Scream, 26th, Frankenstein, 27th, Cam, 28th, Silence of the Lambs, 29th, Annabelle Comes Home, 30th, Hellraiser, and 31st, Halloween. Let me tell you guys how this was initially supposed to go. So my plan was to film little snippets each night of us like after watching the movie to figure out how we felt about the movie and then posting it on November 1st. That didn't happen. I actually ended up filming the first three nights, but after that, a lot happened in October so much to the point that we just completely forgot about it. Like literally, we, we, had, we had our anniversary, we had a Halloween party to plan for, and I think we had a couple other things that we were doing as well. Um, and I think that included the taste of Halloween that we did. And oh my god, it was just absolutely nuts. And I mean, it's not to say it wasn't like fun trying to watch horror movies every night, but unfortunately the nights we forgot, we would try to make up for the next day. And it started to pile up. It would be two movies and three movies and four movies, and we were like, you know what? If we watch them, we watch them. If we don't, we don't. And we only ended up watching, I think, the first, like, eight, 18, 17 days. I'll tell you the movies we actually ended up watching. We we ended up watching Creep, A Nightmare on Elm Street, The Exorcist, Ma, Hush, A Quiet Place, Insidious, Paranormal Activity, Sleepy Hollow, Pan's Labyrinth, Mama, Get Out, Cloverfield, Us, 10 Cloverfield Lane, The Gift, Crimson Peak, VHS, Crawl, 47 Meters Down, Uncaged, and Terrifier. That is literally all we watched. We watched 21 movies out of the 31 movies we were supposed to watch. Now granted, I actually have seen a couple of these movies already, uh, some I actually haven't seen. However, I feel like even though I wasn't able to get the video that I wanted out for you guys, I still want to talk to you guys about the movies that we did watch, and I do remember all of them. So we're gonna start with Creep. Uh, to give you a brief summary of Creep before, like without giving any spoilers, it's basically about this guy who works in like the filming industry, like the video industry, and this rando calls him up and says, hey, I'll pay you a thousand bucks if you just film me for a day. And so he films him for a day. And it ends up taking a completely wrong turn that you could kind of see from the beginning, but then once it kind of dives in a bit further, you're just like, I feel extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> and mind you, um, I'll, I'll say this, every uh, odd number was hubby's choice, every even number was my choice. And I will say, Creep, I'll never watch it again. And lo and behold, they actually made a sequel that's on Netflix that I will not partake in watching. Hubby can watch that all he wants. That is totally not going to be my thing. A Nightmare on Elm Street. I actually hate to admit it, though I am a huge Freddy Krueger fan, I haven't seen the, I hadn't seen the movie all the way through until that day. And I will say, I loved it. I loved every minute of it. I loved seeing Johnny Depp in that movie. It made me, like, super happy. And I will say, just every time Freddy popped up, I absolutely adored those scenes. And in fact, I could quote some of those scenes because I've watched movies that, or I've watched like videos on YouTube that have those iconic scenes, like when Freddy says, this is God, and he like slashes himself or whatever. Or no, he doesn't slash himself then, he just says, this is God, and he just starts running after the chick. Hubby and I quoted that, and we quoted a bunch of it, and it still gave me chills. Like I was kind of like, get him, Freddy, get him. <laughs> Screw the kids, I want Freddy to win. <laughs> The Exorcist is a movie I have seen 20 times over. I love The Exorcist. I know it is supposed to be a very freaky movie. I know it's still considered one of the scariest movies ever made. And I will admit that, you know, in being one of the scariest movies ever made, and like I think it was made in 1973 or something like that, watching it today 
doesn't seem, at least in my opinion, as intense as it probably would have been back then. Now, not to say the movies is still scary. Hubby knows uh, someone, someone in hub, Hubby's life is actually very afraid of that movie. And I personally don't blame that person because this movie can be terrifying if placed in front of the right person. Ma was a movie that, Louis, that Hubby and I actually wanted to catch in theaters, but we completely forgot about it. Now, I personally love Octavia Spencer. I've seen her in a lot of movies, and she's a very, very well-rounded actress. Now, seeing her in a horror movie was definitely different. Uh, Ma is about uh, these kids who end up befriending this older woman and end up partying in her house. Now, someone who I didn't know was in this, I used to watch a show called Girl Meets World, which is a spinoff of the show Boy Meets World. And Boy Meets World was about these kids going through life in high school, getting advice on, I think their like teacher gave them advice or whatever and try to make their lives just a little bit better. And then Girl Meets World was the spinoff where, if you haven't seen Boy Meets World, I am so sorry, Topanga and, uh, they, I forget the guy's name, but they got married and had a kid and now the the main character is teaching at the same school that he was taught at and now his daughter's there with her best friend and they have a friend named Farkle who I believe um somewhere in the series got diagnosed with something I don't remember if it was uh ADHD high functioning autism Asperger's I don't remember but he got diagnosed with something well the kid who played Farkle is actually in this movie and I was looking at him like you're so big Ugh, like I remember watching these these kids and they were like that big <laughs> but overall Ma was a very very good movie we actually bought the DVD and I am so glad that we did I personally wish I could have seen that in theaters given all the stuff that was going on and not to mention this movie did make me feel uncomfortable but it wasn't as bad as Creep that's why I loved it as much as I did Hush is a movie I have actually seen a couple times already it's about this deaf woman who lives in the middle of the woods she's an author and she ends up getting stalked by this serial psychopath killer. And it is a very good movie. Now granted, a lot of these movies have been made like within this type of category, like A Quiet Place, which is the next movie we're talking about, and Bird Box. Now I have seen A Quiet Place and Bird Box, but I think in terms of the suspense and how well it's actually done, Hush was very good because it didn't glorify the fact that she was deaf. It just kind of showed the struggles that she had being deaf. Because with, when she wasn't, apparently, like, the, the story is that she didn't, she was deaf after she got sick. Like, she lost her hearing after she got sick. And she started becoming an author, and her friends started learning sign language to help her out. She moved out of the city, you know, just to move to the, the countryside. And because she's deaf, she didn't realize her, you know, that all this stuff was going on. And when she finally, you know, admitted to her killer, her stalker, whatever, that she's deaf, you know, the guy's like, like it was, well, she, the guy didn't know she was deaf. I think he had to figure that out for herself, himself. But you could see her, like, plotting, like, you can even hear voices in her head, like, plotting out her next step, plotting out what she's supposed to do, you know, what, what the methods are. And it's, it's a really good movie. I really recommend watching it. It is very suspenseful. You are going to be at the edge of your seat the entire movie. And it's still a highly recommended watch for me. A Quiet Place, again, it's, it's having to deal with being silent. Uh, even though you can still hear, you can still see, you just can't speak because these monsters that are after everybody have very good hearing. And if you speak, you're pretty much done for. So, A Quiet Place uh, stars John Krasinski with his, I think, still current wife. I think her name's Emily Blunt, if I remember correctly. And uh, they have two kids. And, well, they initially had three kids. And then something happened, and now they only had two. And the mom's pregnant again. And basically, it's just their story of survival. It's a really good movie. It's still one I wish I had seen in theaters. It was one that I didn't see in theaters, and I regret that to this day. Uh, I know the second movie was supposed to come out. Hubby and I were supposed to see a double feature, but again, you know, like you guys know, it just didn't happen. But still, I own the movie. I love it. And actually, I kind of have a funny story. So my mom works during the nights, so she's awake during the day. And there was one day we were watching the movie out in the living room, and we were about halfway through. And granted, there's not a lot of speaking. There's not a lot of loud noises. Well, sometimes there is, but... This movie is a very quiet movie. And she comes out and she goes, 
can you guys just turn that down? And we're like, turn down a quiet place. Even though it's generally still quiet. <laughs> I don't know, it just kind of makes me laugh. Insidious is a movie I have seen so many times over. I love the Insidious movie. It has a scene in there that still I can't look at to this day. It traumatized me when I was like 18, no, 17 years old. So you guys could probably guess which scene that is. If not, it's the scene where the lipstick face demon comes up behind the guy right there. It just always freaked me out, but I still love the story plot nonetheless, and I love the Insidious franchise. It is definitely one that I you know, continue watching, I will, I will continue to watch to this day, and I really hope I can own the series eventually in the future. Paranormal Activity, the first one, because Hubby refuses to acknowledge all the other movies after that. I personally love the, uh, the Paranormal Activity series. It's one that, you know, it's, it's raw, and I mean, it's, I don't know really how to, how to explain it, it was my first ever found footage movie, Paranormal Activity, uh, other than, I think after that came The Blair Witch Project. But in terms of found footage, I really do like this movie because there is a story there. And you can't get it all in the first movie. Now, uh, yes, I understand. Like, the movies after that aren't exactly the best, but it still tries to, like, sum up the story as best as it can. And I'm sure if you pay attention and you take away the fact that it's bad acting and bad storytelling, I'm sure you could find a story somewhere in there. Sleepy Hollow. You guys know Sleepy Hollow is probably going to be on this list. I am a huge Burton fan, as you guys know. And Sleepy Hollow is a movie I have owned since I was about, I want to say, 14 years old. Sleepy Hollow is, you know, as you guessed, the story of Ichabod Crane and the Headless Horseman. And Ichabod Crane is played by Johnny Depp. Now, I didn't realize that his love interest was played by the girl who played Wednesday Adams, and during the movie, she was 19. Johnny was in his 30s, and I was like, this is so wrong. But, I mean, they never kiss. At most, she kisses his cheek. That's pretty much it. It is a comedy horror, if I say so myself. There's a lot of funniness in the movie. There is a lot of jump scares. There's a lot of, you know, um, there's a lot in there that's going on. But it is still a very good horror movie. And I'm actually really glad that Hubby picked this one. Because it is one that I've neglected a lot since then. And I really regret not watching it more. So I think now that I've kind of found a newer, now that I've kind of rekindled with it and found like more of a passion for Burton and his movies, I definitely want to go back and start re-watching those movies more than I already have. Pan's Labyrinth, that is a personal favorite movie of mine. That was my first ever Guillermo del Toro movie. And I watched it when I was about 10 years old with a friend of mine. Now I know 10 year olds probably should not be watching that movie, but in a way it's magical. It's really magical and mystical. At the same time, it is scary. And one of the creatures that scares the crap out of Hubby in that movie is actually one of my favorite creatures in that movie. It's the uh, the pale man with the hands in his eyes. That's, that's my favorite character in the movie. My favorite monster, I should say. And the fawn in the movie is absolutely... I think he's cool and he looks cool. Now granted, Pan's Labyrinth is a Spanish movie. It is all in Spanish and so you do have to read subtitles. But I say even if you have to read subtitles, it is so worth it. Because that movie is told so beautifully. It's it the story is gory, sad, happy, gruesome. It's it's everything that Guillermo del Toro is. And I am so glad that I'm so happy that I made that choice to put the movie on there, especially because I found the lullaby again and I actually downloaded it on my phone so I could hear it and listen to it. Mama is a personal favorite movie of both my of mine and hubby's. And the reason why is because we don't root for the people, we root for the monster. Because Mama is about these two girls who get stranded in a cabin after their dad. He ends up um, killing the mom, and he's about to kill his daughters, but Mama grabs him and kills him before he, she could before he could take the kids. Now, granted, there is a reason for this, but if you want to know that reason, I highly recommend watching the movie for yourself and really looking at the monster's point of view rather than the, you know, the people in the story because. Granted, you do feel bad for these the two girls, but you also can see the point of view of the monster and why she is doing what she's doing. And the person who actually played Mama also plays the jangly man in uh, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. I learned that from Dead Meat. Get Out is a very, very good movie. The first movie that Jordan Peele ever did like directed. Now, the first movie I ever saw from him was Us, which was still a beautiful movie. I have a funny story to tell you guys about that. 
but I didn't see Get Out until we actually ended up renting it, I think about a year or two ago. Well, like I think it was like the year after it came out, I rented it and I watched it and I absolutely loved it. It's different and it definitely takes more than one watching to really figure out what the hell is going on in that movie. And it's not to say that it was the story was told badly, it was told great. You just, it's almost a case of like, you don't catch these things until you rewatch it, you know what I mean? I mean, that's always the case with, like, some types of movies. Like, you end up watching a movie and you're like, oh, I get it. And then you go back and watch it again. You're like, ooh, I didn't see that detail or I didn't understand that detail. And now I understand it after rewatching it. And that's really what Get Out is. Watch it the first time just purely for the cinematic genius and how beautiful it is. And then kind of go back and rewatch it and really look at the story plot, you know, to understand what's going on. Because I, again, I had to rewatch it a couple times before I fully understood what was go going on. And even when we watched it back in October, I still was finding things that I didn't even know were there. And I think that's the beauty of these kinds of movies where you can go back and watch it and there's still something new to discover. Cloverfield was new for me. I did not know that was a found footage movie. And it was actually very, very good. Um, I definitely like the ending. Uh, to the movie, which I won't spoil for anybody, but Hubby even noticed something in the ending that he hadn't noticed before, and this was one of his favorite movies of all time. But I highly recommend watching Cloverfield. And that is a very, very good movie. It's definitely really good found footage. Us is is another Jordan Peele movie, and it's about this girl who and her family who end up meeting doubles of themselves and are trying to kill, and the doubles are trying to kill them in order to, you know, live their life up on the surface. When I saw Us, I actually saw it with Hubby. And I, okay, so I'm going to give a little bit of a spoiler here. There's a scene where Addie, I think her name's Addie Adelaide. Uh, <laughs> I think her name's Addie, if I remember correctly. Addie and her family are in this beach house and they're sitting in the living room with their doubles. And these guys are dressed in like red jumpsuits. They have scissors and they don't exactly look the best. They look very, very creepy. It wasn't until Red spoke, when she had that really raspy voice, that I almost left the theater because it wasn't because I was bored. It wasn't because I didn't like the movie. It was because Red freaked me out so much, I really wanted to fucking bolt. I'm glad I didn't. The movie's fantastic. I highly recommend owning it if you can. I don't know why I don't own it. I really, really need to own it. But these that movie was super good, super well told, and the... Symbolism throughout the movie is actually really good. I recommend watching uh, Dead Me on his kill count because he dives really dives into the symbolism of this movie. 10 Cloverfield Lane is a, well, not so much a sequel, but not so much a prequel. Okay, so 10 Cloverfield Lane actually takes place during Cloverfield, but from a different point of view. And this movie is not found footage. And in fact, this was my first time seeing John Goodman in a horror movie. So 10 Cloverfield Lane is about this girl who gets in a car wreck and I'm assuming she's running away from her boyfriend or something and John Goodman finds her and he's kind of loony, he's kind of, you know, whatever and it takes place during the events of Cloverfield. I will admit, I think I prefer the original Cloverfield to 10 Cloverfield Lane and I know there's a movie called Cloverfield Paradox which apparently we are not allowed to speak of. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I really love 10 Cloverfield Lane. It definitely showed how paranoid people can be in situations like that. And, you know, I think um, in the end, if I were to say watching that whole movie, John Goodman had the right idea. I just don't think he executed... Well, I mean, it's not to say that he didn't execute the character. The character is really good. The character, in terms of the story, was right all along. Like, <laughs> in watching the ending, John Goodman's character was right all along. And I definitely think if things had gone his way we wouldn't have had the ending that we had. And we definitely wouldn't have had the movie that we had. The Gift is another movie I have seen multiple times over, and it is actually a very, very good movie. The Gift is about this couple who moves into a very nice house, I believe uh, in Los Angeles or something, or not Los Angeles, but they moved to a really nice city. And the main, uh, one of the main characters is actually the voice of Nick Wilde, which I didn't know until Hubby told me. And this, uh, this guy is end ends up being, um, not stalked, well, yeah, stalked. He ends up being stalked by an old friend of his that he, well, not friend, but an a old classmate he used to bully back in school. And it's just a whole downward spiral that I really highly recommend watching. Leaves you on the edge of your seat. You don't know who to feel bad for. You don't know who to root for. 
and especially with the twist at the end, that still leaves me confused to this day because it's still never confirmed. The twist is never confirmed in the movie, but you can make that decision up for yourself. Very good movie. Highly recommend watching it. Crimson Peak. I watched it for the first time this year. It's one of Hubby's personal favorites. I don't think I'll ever be watching that movie again. And the only reason is because it made me feel way too uncomfortable. It is a Guillermo del Toro movie, and the only reason why it made me feel uncomfortable was a slight plot twist that was there, but kind of not there, and then once it was confirmed, it made me feel, like, really fucking uncomfortable. It's a very good story, like, not to say that it isn't, because it is, and I think that's why it made me feel so uncomfortable, because it was told, the story was told so well, a little too well, and the ending was still beyond amazing. But still not one that I would ever watch again. VHS is another found footage uh, movie, but it is, it is an anthology movie. I loved it. I loved the anthology movie because each story was different. Obviously, this one anthology is. <clears throat> each story was different, and each story still had its own twist of craziness and, you know, overall uncomfortableness. And I and that's what I really loved about about VHS is that it made me feel so uncomfortable but it was still such a good movie and I definitely want to see the sequels. I think there's only one or two sequels. I don't remember. Crawl was a movie we wanted to see, well Hubby wanted to see in theaters. I really had no interest. It was about these, this alligator that was, or these alligators that were coming into Florida because of a flood and this daughter and her dad had to escape. Um, it was told really well. It, it was, Good in terms of suspense, uh, it had definitely a lot of horror movie cliches, a lot of movie cliches, but Hubby liked it. Uh, me personally, I don't think I'll ever watch it again, but if you guys want to give it a shot, I definitely think it's worth the one-time watch. 47 Meters Down Uncaged is the sequel to 47 Meters Down. 47 Meters Down, the original movie is about these two divers who end up getting stuck in a cage uh, surrounded by sharks. 47 Meters Down Uncaged is a group of girls who go cave diving in a cave they are not technically supposed to be in, and they encounter a prehistoric shark that has been around since God knows when, and has been adapted to live in dark environments. I don't recommend watching this movie unless you want to feel a high sense of claustrophobia, because let me tell you, this movie takes the term claustrophobia and cranks it up to a million. I think much worse, if not as bad as uh, The Descent. Just just a heads up. But I still love it. I love, I still want to go cage diving even though, even though I've seen these movies. Hubby thinks I'm nuts, but you know, I'll, I'll take that claim. <laughs> and then finally, the last movie we watched last month was Terrifier. That was a movie, uh, I, guess, I guess it was a low budget film that ended up becoming like a really big like cult classic movie. And it's about this clown who doesn't say a word during the movie and he just terrorizes all these people. It's unnerving, but it's good and I actually ended up laughing at one point and it has a really good, you know, plot twist and story build up if you ask me. But I thank you all so much for watching today's uh, video. I know it's a bit of a longer one, but I just had a lot to say on this and I didn't exactly want to leave it. I didn't exactly wanted to leave it, you know, undiscussed because I did wanted to talk about it at some point. I just didn't know how I wanted to do it and finally I actually found a way to do it. So thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye, little skeletons. Stay safe. I love you guys.